Assalamu alaikum. My name's uh, Zamel and uh, I live here in Australia. I've been a Muslim for uh, approximately 16 years now. Malcolm uh, was my uh, uh, given name. Well, I was, uh, as I say, I was born here in Australia and um, I was educated and got qualifications as, a, as an engineer and did some postgraduate studies in, in business. And so my work experience reflects the, uh, uh, the qualifications. Uh, I was an engineer uh, in construction. Uh, I was then involved in uh, marketing, uh, product and development research, and uh, finally now in, um, in taxation uh, advice as a consequence of my uh, studies in, uh, in business. Uh, my exposure to religion was uh, very minimal uh, as I was growing up. Uh, certainly, uh, Islam uh, in the Australian environment uh, uh, was hardly known at all. Uh, if it was known, it was only referred to as a, or only considered as an as a, uh, as a ancient uh, and backward uh, religion, and uh, and had overtones of being barbaric. So that's really the, the what uh, Islam was, or how it was perceived when I was growing up in the uh, 60s and 70s. Uh, so uh, my exposure to, to Islam didn't come about until I actually uh, took up a position in Malaysia uh, on a contract that I was uh, undertaking as an engineer over there. And so that was really my first exposure to, uh, to Islam. Well, the, uh, again, set in the context of, uh, of my exposure to, to religion, uh, as I grew up, as I grew up, um, the uh, religion wasn't an important part of, uh, of my uh, knowledge base. Uh, in fact, it was probably the last part of our knowledge base, and so I didn't actually sort any any uh, data on or information or, or uh, knowledge about religion until I actually went to Malaysia and uh, was exposed to the to religion. And obviously, consequently, uh, uh, living there, you had uh, access to uh, various uh, written material. Uh, obviously, people, uh, imams of uh, local mosques. And um, uh, they had a, uh, or I believe they still have, a department which uh, assists people in understanding their, their religion and uh, also in uh, allowing people to uh, embrace Islam. So most of my uh, knowledge um, came about uh, during my time in, in uh, Malaysia. And uh, obviously, uh, subsequent to that, um, in the last uh, 15 years or so, I've, it's been a fairly intensive uh, literature re review and uh, study uh, in Australia in the last uh, five years or so. We've, we've uh, hummed little, been very fortunate in having um, scholars and uh, eminent speakers of uh, about Islam come through and uh, conduct tours, a uh, lecture tours. So uh, we've had uh, uh, not only exposure in the written form, but also we can speak to people who are um, at the forefront of, uh, of Islamic thought at the moment. I think um, uh, it wasn't a question of restriction or, or loss of, uh, of freedom, uh, because um, prior to embracing Islam, there's really no, uh, it may have been freedom, but it was uh, more of a chaotic freedom. There was no boundaries. And unless you have some boundaries uh, to set yourself within, well then you're, uh, you're not really moving forward, you're just going around in circles or going any random direction. And so Islam gives you that, uh, those boundaries uh, to which you can move within, but obviously uh, still have uh, freedom as an individual. And so at the time of embracing Islam, um, uh, I wasn't concerned about loss of restrictions, or, or sorry, uh, loss of freedoms or, or imposing new restrictions upon me. I was really concerned more about uh, having a direction to uh, to move towards, and so um, that was primarily one of the reasons why I, uh, I became a Muslim. Is that uh, uh, Islam offered a uh, a framework, a structure, within which to um, uh, develop my uh, spirituality. Well, the uh, uh, I was brought up in the 60s and 70s, and. Uh, and at that time, there's lots of great social change occurring in the Western world. 
Uh, we had uh, various movements, various pop, the, the explosion of the pop culture. And so uh, everything, uh, all, the, all the definitions of, uh, that define a society up until that time were uh, under attack or under review and, uh, and being overthrown essentially. So there was a, a great time of, uh, of movement and, uh, uh, in the in the thinking of people. And so uh, I was part of that, uh, of that environment or part of that uh, society. And so we had uh, lots of, uh, uh, lots, of uh, uh, lots of normal uh, society norms removed from, uh, from our behavior. And uh, uh, even though those, those norms were removed, it didn't mean that uh, you became uh, uh, radical or out of control. Uh, we, my my uh, actions or the way I lived was, uh, was not much different to what it is now, uh, but uh, uh, now I have a, a purpose and a, a definition for which to live. Uh, so even though uh, certain things are no longer available to me, they are, they are not, they're not missed. In fact, they're uh, complemented or filled by, uh, by a more halal uh, environment to, uh, uh, to pursue those interests in. Yeah, music was uh, was probably at the forefront of that change uh, in the 60s and 70s, and uh, and so obviously uh, all all us uh, uh, people living in the West were were exposed to music, and uh, and that became a central theme of our existence, and uh, and then we had the, uh, the sexual revolution, we had the uh, uh, the freedom from uh, from our parents, freedom from authority. And uh, and all those things, which are, if you like, the stereotypes of that uh, of that time, so uh, they were were available to me. Uh, but uh, you'll find that uh, most people uh, don't live out on the edge. They live a fairly normal sort of lives. Uh, you know, people create partnerships or relationships with with other people, and uh, and stick within those uh, those types of uh, relationships. The only difference is that. Um, uh, now or, or in Islam, these relationships have a certain structure that must be uh, must be complied with. So, th living together with uh, with an opposite partner is obviously has to be done in a uh, halal way and not in, in a uh, haram way as uh, as we did in the past. The hippie culture, uh, as I was mentioned before, was uh, was 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 being introduced or was taking effect in uh, in the community at large, but the. The image of uh, of drunken uh, uh, people uh, or people stoned on drugs is really not a, a correct image either. Um, people do things in moderation. That tends to be the the natural things the thing of people is that they they still got to live, they still got to survive, still got to make a way in your future. Uh, it, all it means is that you have access to these uh, these uh, these uh, substances. And uh, it only tends to be the people, uh, uh, the outliers of the community, which uh, which in overindulge in those. But in the in the community that I grew up in, um, certainly alcohol was available, and uh, uh, drugs were available, and um, and all the all the stereotypes that go with that that image uh, were available. But people uh, still wanted to progress in the world, still want in a, in a material sense. They still wanted to have the uh, have the career, have the the job, and have a have a family. So those things were, were still uh, overriding the, uh, the, uh, the thoughts of, uh, of people as in, that, in that era. Well, again, I suppose one of the uh, uh, idioms of the, of the era that I grew up was that uh, uh, whatever you want to do, is, you can do it as long as, it's, uh, as, long as you don't hurt anyone. So uh, if you want to do that, then you go ahead and do it. So that was really the, the impact that uh, people had when I mentioned that I was... Uh, I was a Muslim. Was that okay? That's fine for you, uh, but don't uh, don't impose that upon me. And uh, so my family effect uh, were were not or are not a very religious family. There's no uh, no churchgoers. There's no uh, no discussion really of uh, of religion at any time in the family. Uh, so uh, they thought that oh, it's a, perhaps Islam is just a stage you're going through. And um, you'll grow out of it, and um, uh, we'll we'll just see what happens. So that's that's how the family reacted. There was no hostility, uh, and there was no uh, no uh, 
uh, encouragement to pursue it further. It was just a, a, a neutral reaction saying that, uh, well, you do what you want to do, but uh, don't uh, expect us to follow. My family effect, uh, were, were not, or are not a very religious family. There's no, uh, no churchgoers, there's no, uh, no discussion really of, uh, of religion at any time in the family. Uh, so uh, they thought that oh, it's a, perhaps Islam is just a stage you're going through and um, you'll grow out of it and um, uh, we'll, we'll just see what happens. So that's, that's how the family reacted. There was no hostility uh, and there was no, uh, no uh, uh, encouragement to pursue it further. It was just a, a, a neutral reaction saying that, uh, well, you do what you want to do but uh, don't uh, expect us to follow. Uh, no, they haven't uh, accepted it. Uh, uh, we're taught in Islam that the uh, that we cannot change the uh, the person's uh, uh, intention or, or belief. Uh, only Allah will do that. Certainly, we can show them, uh, present to them what our Islam is about, uh, and uh, we do that by by words. We do that by actions, and so. I live a fairly, uh, I believe, a fairly good uh, is, uh, life uh, as a Muslim, observing the the, uh, the constraints or observing the uh, uh, the pillars of Islam, and so they're certainly aware of what uh, what's required, but um, uh, none of them have uh, have expressed an interest to uh, to go to Islam. I haven't uh, had that uh, that reaction. The uh, my the people around me have basically uh, said, "Well, if that's what you want to do, that's that's fine." You know, I could have been taking up uh, <clears throat> the Zen, uh, the Zen religion. I could have been taking up Buddhism or whatever. Uh, as far as I was concerned, it was just a uh, something that uh, uh, I was doing, and that uh, you know, you're, you're Muslim today. Perhaps next year you might be something else. Um, uh, so it wasn't ever decided or perceived as being a threat because they thought, well, it's just something you're going through and uh, we expect uh, you to, uh, to be something else in the future. Uh, well, uh, certainly in the Australian uh, environment or context, uh, there's various subjects you, you, you don't uh, talk about and one of those is, is religion. Uh, and uh, be it Christianity or, or Islam or, or any form of religion, people's eyes uh, tend to glaze over and uh, 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 interest is lost in that subject. So the opportunity for discussion of religion uh, with uh, non-Muslims um, in this society tends to be uh, fairly limited. So uh, you're doing more harm than, uh, than good to religion to, uh, uh, to continually uh, present it uh, to people. The, the best way to present it to people is not in a verbal sense but uh, by demonstrating actions and uh, you know, observing uh, the pillars of Islam is, is a good way to uh, show people that there is uh, some integrity uh, in the religion, that there is integrity in the religion. There's certainly a feeling that uh, you no longer um, uh, observe the, the norms of their, of their uh, way of living. Alcohol is a, is a big, big part in the Australian uh, psychic, and to uh, uh, to not drink is uh, is viewed with, uh, in the inst first instance, is viewed with a bit of suspicious uh, suspiciousness by other people. But uh, uh, yeah, Allah works in uh, in in his own ways, and uh, uh, you, I found what happens is that uh, uh, your friends change. Uh, uh, I don't mean the actual friends that you have changed, but you're you have a new uh, sphere of friends. You develop relationships with new people, and um, and that's happened. That's what happened in my case. Is that uh, the friends I now started to uh, to uh, establish a relationship with were uh, were, were Muslims. So um, so the loss of uh, of the old friends wasn't uh, really a problem because um, uh, uh, I've now started to associate with, uh, with, with Muslim friends and, uh, and uh, so uh, associating with the Muslim community and having Muslim friends starts to increase your faith as you, as you pursue, go along. I think uh, that's, a, uh, that's, that's a difficult question to answer with the yes or no. I, I think uh, the reasons people uh, embrace Islam is, is for, it can be uh, quite varied. 
uh, certainly the, the image that Islam has uh, in the community is, uh, is certainly a negative one. And uh, based on the image alone, uh, people would not, uh, would be frightened of it, and people are frightened of it. Uh, so that, that keeps people away. People would, uh, would embrace Islam, or embrace Islam because they, they're either they're searching for the truth and they're prepared to look beyond uh, the images created by, uh, by the media. And, uh, and unfortunately, by, created by some Muslims themselves. Uh, but uh, people who are looking for truth will, uh, will, will look behind the, those facades and, uh, and identify what the reality is. Um, after the recent uh, uh, incidences that occurred in America, the, uh, uh, I didn't uh, have any exposure to any hostility. Uh, uh, I felt uh, concerned for my, uh, for my wife and my uh, family. Uh, I have uh, daughters and they all wear the hijabs and obviously my wife wears the hijab, so they're visibly uh, uh, exposed to the broader community. So I was concerned about them, uh, but uh, uh, alhamdulillah here we had, uh, uh, while we had a bit of uh, fear in the community, uh, in the non-Muslim community, about what was going on, we didn't have any overt uh, assaults. Uh, not to say there wasn't, but in my context, uh, we didn't suffer any uh, any backlash from the uh, from the incident. And in fact, uh, uh, Allah is the best of planners. Uh, we've had more people uh, speaking to us now about uh, about Islam than we ever had before in general conversation. Well, um, that situation hasn't arisen uh, largely because, <coughs> excuse me, they're, it's a young, uh, young family, they're young children, but, um, uh, and also because um, Alhamdulillah, I have a, good, a very good wife and, um, and uh, we create an environment, an Islamic environment at home, and so there's no feeling that uh, Islam is second best, there's no feeling that uh, uh, that we're sacrificing something to, to uh, something good for something less. There's, uh, they understand that uh, Islam is, is their religion. They understand that that's the normal uh, for our, for them, and they understand the beauty of, uh, I hope so, of, of Islam. The uh, uh, that's a uh, again another difficult question. Um, it creates you're presenting hypotheticals, which uh, uh, are just that hypotheticals. Uh, if I look at the instance of my, my children, they are, they're born into a Muslim family, and uh, for them, uh, Muslim is, uh, or Islam is the natural way. It is part of their life. It's, uh, it gives their life meaning. Um, whether to turn back the client time or to have that choice of uh, be, being a Muslim or a non-Muslim is, uh, is, if you like, a, uh, uh, a question which can't be answered. But uh, by the same token, uh, that, that question does confront Muslims who are born in, in, uh, into the Muslim uh, faith. They, um, uh, quite often, the, the, uh, the worst thing about, about uh, Islam are the Muslims, not the, not, not the religion. And uh, I think uh, some of the Dawah work that's being done uh, by uh, our brothers and sisters around the world should be concentrated on, on the uh, Muslim population to, uh, to bring them back to the Quran and the Sunnah. I don't take things for granted, uh, whereas uh, a Christian or a Muslim or a, uh, a Jew born into uh, the appropriate uh, family may take things for granted because they, they, uh, they're taught that that's the way that they are, what's the way things are. So with, uh, with my uh, embracing Islam, it was a conscious choice. Um, there was uh, a period of uh, evaluation of pros and cons between um, between Islam and, uh, and Christianity and whatever, and uh, and so there was a, a process where I had to uh, arrive at a decision. So there's that review process in the uh, uh, that took place in the conversion to uh, uh, to Islam, which uh, I think uh, all Muslims need to need to undertake as well. We all need to be aware of why we, why are we Muslims, or what are our responsibilities and obligations as Muslims. I haven't felt that at all. Um, uh, what happens is obviously your, 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 your faith is tested from time to time. It, at times it grows, at times it weakens. Uh, and that's a, a part of uh, a, a struggle that we all have as, 
as uh, as Muslims. So um, certainly, the uh, your your faith is challenged, and uh, uh, and that uh, I don't believe is unique to me. But um, there's no sense of uh, of loss or grief at all of becoming a Muslim. No. Well, Dawa it takes many forms, as as we all know, and. Um, uh, we have, all have obligations as uh, as Muslims to uh, to uh, uh, let the religion be known, but we're not uh, responsible for the conversion of or reversion of, of all of all people. Only Allah knows who will uh, who will uh, open their hearts to to Islam. So my uh, my dawah, if you like, has been more to understand the religion uh, uh, better. Um, you know, we can't uh, make claims for Allah which uh, which He didn't make. So obviously, we need to improve, increase our religion to make sure that we, when we do talk to people, that uh, we are speaking the truth as uh, as Allah revealed it to us. So my dawah is more to uh, to show people by actions rather than words, to show people that um, uh, as a Muslim, I'm, I'm living the. Uh, uh, a good, uh, clean life. That my family is uh, is growing up strong and uh, and uh, have principles that we we're trustworthy people. That um, you know all the things which you would typically expect from uh, from uh, people who observe uh, their faith. But I think that's the uh, that's the largest. Uh, well, for me, that, that's certainly the, the the biggest jihad is uh, is to create a home environment in which uh, uh, Islam can. Uh, uh, can grow, or the, the faith of my children, my wife, and myself can grow in an Islamic environment. Uh, now, my my parents, uh, uh, my father passed away many years ago, so it's only my my mother, and uh, my mother is uh, like 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 us all, I suppose, is a is a product of her times, and um, uh, she was a uh, she was born in Nura, which uh, which had some. Uh, domination by by religion, uh, that uh, the church was a was was seen as a uh, as an authority and uh, not necessarily a uh, a kind authority. So her reaction or exposure to religion is uh, is seen from that context. So um, uh, even though she understands what uh, what what I'm uh, and my family are about, and she sees that that what we do. Uh, I think um, uh, my mother is uh, is in her own way uh, uh, a product of her time. I don't believe I'm, it's my position to to give messages. I think uh, the most important thing is to uh, understand your religion, is to uh, to uh, to gain more awareness of what your the gift that you've been given by Allah, and uh, 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 start in your own home. Start to uh, practice. Uh, uh, the Islamic faith in your own home. Muhammad is and always will be the last and final prophet of Allah. He was a mercy unto the universe. Peace and blessings be on Allah.